so Beowulf is a uh, ancient epic poem about this guy and the nation of uh, Delaware, I think. Yeah, and uh, well, hang on, the story begins with there's this king in Delaware, and his name is Hrothgar. And Hrothgar, uh, he likes to party, so he builds a big place where everyone can go and drink and fight and party and stuff. But uh, that all goes wrong because this guy, Grindel, shows up and he hates parties. He's uh, So yeah, he, he starts eating people and ripping them in half and everyone's really sad because he ruined their party. So, Parathgar, he, uh, he doesn't know what to do because he's old and he's frail. So, he says, I know. I, I will call my buddy Beowulf. And he'll come on down here and he'll sort this whole thing out. So, Beowulf comes from Geatland. And he says, I'll kill Grendel. Why not? So... They have like a big party again. Beowulf and his friends, they all go to sleep in the big party house. But Grendel shows up and he starts quietly snacking on some of Beowulf's friends. But it turns out that Beowulf was uh, not asleep. He was merely chilling. So he like jumps up and he starts wailing on Grendel. And it's like a pretty even match, which is surprising because Grendel's like this satanic hell monster and Beowulf's just some guy. But I guess Beowulf works out a lot, so whatever. Anyway, Beowulf like rips Grendel's arm off and starts smacking him around with it, saying, stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself. And Grendel runs away crying with one arm and he's really sad because that was his favorite arm and anyway everyone else is really happy because Grendel's gone and they can party and then uh, the next night while they're all celebrating Grendel uh, Grendel's mother shows up and she's like this horrible snake monster thing for some reason and uh, Grendel's mother's mad because she wants her son's arm back and she starts killing everybody and Hrothgar is like, oh, this is just BS, not this again. This is like bull crap. And uh, Beowulf says, you know what, I'll, well, I'll kill this one too. I don't care. So they track down Grendel's mother to this cave and there's this guy there and he's like, hey, Beowulf, I have this sword. It's really important to me. It was passed down by my grandfather. And, uh, it means the world to me. And I want you to take it. And you can be really respectful to it. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, just please don't lose it during the fight. Because, again, it means the world to me. So Beowulf throws it away. Like, the second he's in the cave, he's like, I don't want this crap. And he finds one in, like, a, a different sword in a trash heap and he's like this one's better for some reason it looks better it's shiny anyway he finds Grendel's mother in like a lake cause there's a lake instead of this cave so he like cuts her head off and he's like that'll show you and then he wins and everyone's really happy they give Beowulf some gifts except for the guy Beowulf threw his sword away he's really sad and uh, Rothgar, he's like, ah, oh, Beowulf, I love you like a son. And Beowulf was like, that's great, but I gotta go home. And uh, Rothgar cries because he knows that he'll never see Beowulf again. But I don't know why. Anyway, he's got a wife too. And his wife like, what? Anyway, Beowulf, he goes home to Geatland and he becomes king like instantly because he killed a whole bunch of people. 
And uh, one of these kings, like, there are just a couple rules. Uh, there's this dragon in a cave over there. Don't don't mess with it. It's got it's filled with beautiful treasure, treasure beyond your wildest dreams. But uh, yeah, just leave that alone. Anyway, this this idiot goes and he grabs a cup, like a commemorative Batman cup he finds in the cave. Anyway, the dragon gets mad, and starts killing people. And everyone's like, Beowulf, you gotta do something. Beowulf says, I am about to do two things. Number one, I am going to get dressed. Number two, I'm going to kill that umpin' dragon. So anyway, he gets his men together. And they go down with their weapons. And they're going to kill this dragon. But uh, once they see the dragon, all of his men are like, oh, screw this. They all like bail on him. Except for one guy named Wigloaf. And Wigglow's like, I'll fight with you, Beowulf. And Beowulf's like, all right. So they fight this dragon, and they kill it. So it's dead, and everyone's happy. But in the process of killing the dragon, Beowulf is mortally wounded, which means he is going to die soon. So he's lying on the beach, and Wigloaf approaches him. And Beowulf says, come here, Wigloaf. I have business that you need to carry out for me. And so Wigglove gets closer as the, and Beowulf says, first things first is, uh, well, you, you need to be the new king. So Wigglove's like, yeah, sure, I'll do that. And he's like, the next thing is all the treasure that the dragon was guarding. Don't give that to my people, no put that in my and like when they bury me bury that with me and Wigglow's like that's kind of a waste but whatever yeah we'll do that too and uh then Beowulf says and another thing I want you to erect a structure in remembrance of me and it'll rest on the cliff side near the sea and sailors will use it to guide their ships. And so Wiglow's like, yeah, like a lighthouse. No, 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 not a lighthouse. It's more like a, it's like a beacon. And like you light it, and the, yeah, that, that's a lighthouse. No, Wiglow, if you're not listening to me, I, uh, I, it's like a, like it's a building with light in it, and uh, you are describing the exact definition of a lighthouse. No, Wigloaf. I swear to do not build me a freaking lighthouse. That's not what I want. Well, you're being very un Anyway, Beowulf dies, so they build him a lighthouse so he can watch over the sea, sort of, from beyond the grave. And that's pretty much it. He's the uh, big hero and the end.